I'm here at Evangel Cathedral, right here in my neighborhood in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. So I wanted to make this video in order to address some of the things that I've learned since I started my YouTube channel. It's the end of the year, so I think it's important to dot some I's and cross some T's. So there's a tremendous amount of things that I want to discuss, but I'm going to keep it organized to just a few points so that whoever is thinking about opening a YouTube channel or is just simply watching me and wants to know a little bit more about the creation process and what are some of my personal trials and tribulations that they've gained from this video. So let's go. So the first point I want to make is regarding views. I have been lucky to make collaborations with some pretty big YouTubers this year. And to my surprise, my most viewed videos are not necessarily my collaborations. So what did that tell me? I learned that Ivan, you have to be able to keep creating content on your own. For anybody watching who's thinking, man, if I get to meet this big YouTuber out there, if I get to meet that one big YouTuber out there, it can help my channel take off. It certainly can help you get subscribers, but it's not necessarily going to get you consistent, continuous views. You have to be able to be creative on your own without worrying so much about collaborating and collaborating all the time. I definitely have enjoyed meeting some people that I have admired, you know, in particular, Wodemaya, who I have been so blessed to meet because I've seen him on TV for a long time. So when I reached out to him in Ghana and we met in person, it was a big surprise. And I learned a tremendous amount from him. That being said, I had to go out there, besides meeting him, creating more videos in Ghana, more and more on my own. You can't keep your channel going if all you count on is collaborations. Because at the end of the day, people are coming to your channel to watch you. They're not coming to watch anybody else. And if you film with a big YouTuber, they will come and watch that YouTuber on your channel, but they may not necessarily return. So when you're thinking long term, if people are subscribing and they're not watching you, you are losing because you have a channel that has a huge amount of subscribers, but your views don't reflect that. So what I've learned is that continue to seek collaborations whenever possible, but definitely push your own videos. And guys, I've tried to do this every time I've traveled this year. If you've been watching my channel, I've been really going out there and trying to get my own content all the time. I'm saying this because so many people have reached out to me and by no means I'm a big YouTuber. I think I'm just starting out here. I'm just getting my feet wet, man. I'm getting started. And say, hey, Ivan, can we meet up and do these collaborations? Or well, I'm waiting for this person. And whenever possible, I have met people and collaborated with them because I'm thankful for the collaborations that I've had, but you can't do it with just collaborations, all right? You have to go out there and be creative. And it's hard. But one thing I will also say about the creative process is the more you do this, the better you get and sometimes we're looking so far away for ideas when right in your neighborhood right in your home you have content so this right here is not just a church it's a ginormous church and one thing here about PG County is we are known for these humongous churches so in future videos not now because I'm getting ready to travel I will cover more and more and more of the content here within my own state of Maryland. So one more thing I want to point out about this is dealing with people's expectations. When you go somewhere and you make a video that for some reason people are not happy with, they have the tendency to write and say, hey man, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Filming YouTube videos is very difficult. To find people who are comfortable talking to the camera it's not easy. Many times, I want to make a video about a specific subject and you ask people on the street and they don't want to talk to you about this. So then people feel some kind of way and they drop some very rude comments because you're not doing exactly what they have in mind. And I always feel like, man, if you're such a creative person, enough that you tell me 
don't go to Ghana first, don't go to that country, go to this place, go to that place. Why don't you pick up a camera yourself and make that content? Because at the end of the day, it's pretty interesting to me how some people without a YouTube channel have never created even an Instagram reel worth watching, have so much to say about what I should be doing. <laughs> it's like, man, you know, of course I appreciate feedback. It's very helpful. But it's different than someone being so rude and aggressive and feeling like they get to tell you what you should be doing or if you're not getting views, it's because of this or that problem. Not every video you make is gonna be interesting. Not every video you make is gonna have a lot of views, especially when you're just still gaining an audience. Guys, it's been, this is my second year that I'm completing right now. This is my second year. The first year when I started my channel, I was not even able to edit. I had to go out and film content, and I was very timid. I was using my iPhone. I didn't know how to film and what to film. But after the process of filming was complete, I had to send it to somebody else, and she had a full-time job. She was doing this on the side. You get to see her in future videos because I'm planning to interview her soon. But she helped me a lot. But it wasn't easy, so it took me time. You know, but somehow people get angry. Oh, you know, why are you filming in this country? Why don't you go film in that country? It's crazy sometimes the expectations that people have. But you have to keep creating. You never know what video is going to work. And so far, when I look at my listing of my top five videos, the most popular ones are not the ones I expected. The internet is strange, but if you want to do content creation, keep producing it doesn't matter what people say or feel about it with time you will get to what you need to get if you keep producing and producing all the time so basically learning how to deal with people's feeling like they understand what you need to do and must do more than you who's out there in the field trying to film and create content was a little bit frustrating so that's one thing if you are planning to open a YouTube channel you must know that a lot of people have a lot to say about what you're doing, but they're not doing it themselves. I suggest if anybody is inspired to create content, just pick up a camera and try to film even just a five minute clip of something. It's not as easy as it looks. It's really not. But it's so much easier to talk about it, you know, when it's somebody else doing it. But you have to be willing to even almost embarrass yourself and be ready for rejection. Let me try something. Hey, um, can, I, can I ask you something for a second? You see, this is what I'm talking about. People are not always willing to talk. And pointing the camera at people can even sometimes lead to certain type of reactions. You never know what you're gonna get. It's always good to seek permission first. And I try to do that every single time. But when you film in public, it's tricky. More on this later on in the video. All that being said, the biggest thing I've learned this year is how to edit. It has completely changed my YouTube creation process because when I had to rely on someone else, I was not able to produce videos as fast as I wanted to. And many people have reached out to me. I've had a lot of very positive feedback about my editing style. And for anyone who has reached out to me and said, Ivan, I really like the way you edit. Thank you so much. I appreciate those comments a lot. It takes me a lot of time to edit the videos the way I do, and every video is different. Sometimes it's an interview, sometimes it's just a pure vlog, sometimes you can be at a game event, sometimes you can be at a party, and there's a lot of noise. What should you do? So personally, I also want to address that because many people have asked me, so let me just point this out. I'm using a program called Final Cut. Final Cut is the Apple software for editing. But you don't have to use Final Cut. There are many different ones out there. I even heard of some people using CapCut for editing. And CapCut is free. You can edit from your phone. You can edit from a computer. They have you know, a computer version and a phone version. So whether you have money to purchase a Mac or not, that should not stop you if you want to edit because you can download CapCut for free and then you can start editing. The most important thing is to get started. Do not be discouraged. If you're standing there thinking, man, I don't have any content. 
because I don't have money to travel. It's expensive to travel. It's expensive to buy a computer. You can always get these things from the Dollar General, right? But if you have a cell phone and you are really thinking about creating a YouTube channel, I would say go ahead and get started. It's with time and repetition that you will get better and better and better. I didn't go to school to learn how to edit. I basically taught myself by watching YouTube videos about it. I really wanted to learn. You can never master everything because they always improve something. But what you need in order to produce a YouTube video is actually all available on YouTube already. You have a lot of different tricks and tips and tutorial from very, very knowledgeable men and women out there who have created these videos and can teach you some of that stuff. So one guy that I watch in particular is Final Cut Bro here. This fact or that thing, anything you wanna know. They have like hundreds and hundreds of videos and you can do everything self-taught. So that's what I wanted to say regarding the creative process. That has really changed the way I produce my videos because I can now go out, film something and then release it, something I couldn't do before. So this is for anyone who's thinking about opening a YouTube channel. Don't be discouraged. Don't think that you need to have all of this money and don't think that you need to meet this big YouTuber. You don't. You really, really don't. If you post videos all the time, some videos are gonna do great, some videos won't. Every channel goes through this until they have reached a certain level of audience and it takes a lot of time. Some people are just, they just have that personality where they're funny, right? Some people are just, you know, beautiful. People wanna look at them. Some people just cover the most dangerous things. Some people cover sports, cooking. It doesn't matter what it is, but to be successful, you need to be consistent. That's the one thing, you have to be consistent. And for you to be consistent, you have to film things that you enjoy, things that you like. I've always enjoyed traveling. This is, this is not new. I've traveled to close to 70 countries now. I'm at 68 to be exact. And I've traveled way before I started my YouTube channel. The only difference is now is that I get to record my adventures and I bring you along with me. And for those of you who have stuck around to all these different changes in my channel, when I traveled to one country and then another one, and maybe the content that you were expecting is not exactly what I'm releasing, I thank you guys for sticking through. I'm not trying to stick to one particular thing because when I travel, I meet people, I do interviews, sometimes I do restaurant reviews, sometimes I do hotel reviews, sometimes I vlog. I don't want to be stuck or pigeonholed to one particular thing. So that brings me to the next subject. The idea of being African American that I've used many times on my titles. So every time I have used the title that includes African American, it has really roughed in some feathers, man. Oh my God. People feel the need to go remind me that I am not African American. I'm from Cameroon. I should go film my country. Why am I using that title? And then they tell me all the history about what it means to be African American. Wow. <laughs> that is one thing I never expected, man, when I decided to do YouTube. It's for people to be so short-sighted and close-minded. There are two reasons why I use the title. First of all, I'm a proud Cameroonian. I'm quite aware that I'm originally from Cameroon. I'm also American. If it bothers you, it bothers you. I spent most of my life in the United States. I am an American. I've served proudly this country in the military. So who are you on the internet to tell me that I'm not American or African-American? I'm also African. And I'm a proud Cameroonian at that. They, they feel the need to insult my country, to tell me, you know, oh, my country is, um, in so many words, I can't put this on this video. They insult it, they say it's poor, it's this and that. And these are other Africans saying this to me. The level of, you know, negativity and animosity that some people have against other Africans is beyond me. I'm African also. That's where my family comes from. That's where my roots are from, you know? I never said I wasn't. I said in many videos that I'm from Cameroon, many times, and sometimes I say I'm American. What's wrong with that? So <laughs> the whole thing about African-American, let me address this. I, I'm a proud, proud Cameroonian, okay? I'm from the country of Roger Miller. Two, Roger Miller! <laughs> it's his bail, right? 
Joel Embiid. You ever do to deserve that kind of treatment? <laughs> Samuel Eto. Francis Ngannou. And a matchup with Ngannou. Oh! Down goes the rim. Francis Ngannou. One of the things about Cameroon that we say in French is Cameroon is l'Afrique en miniature, which basically means Cameroon is a small side Africa. And now they even call Cameroon the continent. Trust me, guys, there's a lot for me to film in Cameroon. There's a lot. I cannot wait to connect with some of the people that I haven't seen in a long time and family members that are over there thing is with this whole youtube journey thing one thing i really want to do is discover and see new countries right so that was the whole point behind opening this youtube channel and my last recent trip in cameroon was for a funeral so i was there a few years back and i will go back when i decide to go back you know and when i organize what i need to organize in order to get back but next thing i know i have this priest online right who is like making these videos? Hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> the reason I'm connecting with some people is because they think I'm American. And he's like made a whole video about me, man. This guy is crazy. <laughs> Just like making up all kinds of stuff, saying I'm afraid to go to Cameroon. And I mean, like, it, it's just, and then the thing is, he talks about me like he knows me. I then, now it is, it's too much now. Are you not from Cameroon? Are you not from Cameroon? Look at him. Like he knows me. Like we've been like, you know, sipping, you know, champagne somewhere. We sat in the block somewhere. We were, you know, high school buddies or something. Bro, I don't know you, man. Find something more productive with your time than to talk about me. There's so much to talk about. I don't even know where this guy is from. I found this video and it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious, man. You know that someone will spend so much time to attack me and make a whole video. Make me famous, man. Make me famous. Keep talking about me. It's crazy, this guy. His whole channel is dedicated and talking about people in a negative light. And then he calls himself a pastor. Let's read. Man, I pray for whoever goes to that church. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Woo! Anyways, that's that. The only reason why I use the name African American I am African and I am American at the same time. I cover that. The other reason is that there are some titles on YouTube that if you use them, I don't know what it is with the algorithm. For some reason, YouTube pushes certain videos with a certain title. You will notice, for example, when I go film a particular neighborhood like the rich, where the rich hide, it's a name that a lot of YouTubers have used. I don't know who originally came up with that title, but it's one of those things that it generally works. My number one video ever filmed is where the rich hide in Accra, Ghana. You know, I love, love, love that video, you know, but it gave me the most views at this point that I ever had in any other video. So I also noticed when you say, if I say first impression as a Cameroonian, it doesn't get as many hits than if I say, for example, African American. There's, there's a lot more African Americans, right, on YouTube at least, that are covered. You know, so they connected on YouTube, they will get a lot more coverages. So if I feel that a title will be more effective without clickbaiting, right? I think that it's within my right to use that. And I'm not lying when I make these titles. Guys, one of the most difficult things after the video is filmed is also actually coming up with the title. The thumbnail is one thing and it's a challenge every time and I'm trying to improve from when I started. Should you or should you not put your face? That has been a big debate. Or is it more effective if you put your face? I think personally it's better if you put your face, but some people don't put their faces on their thumbnails every single time and they still have a tremendous amount of views. So I think it's a judgment call. I don't think that there is a one rule, you know, one size fits all for everybody. I don't, I don't think so. I, I just think that content creation is so vast that whatever you want to do, ultimately you can do it. And it may or may not work, but if you keep doing it, then you will attract people that like that kind of content. There are people that like all kinds of stuff out there, but you can't be mad if it doesn't work at first. You keep on trying. So that's the thing about African-American I wanted to cover, you know. I know where my roots are from. I know where I'm from, you know. I have two nations that make me who I am, and it's the beautiful country of Cameroon, and it's the beautiful and amazing country of the United States. Cameroon is going through some challenges. So are many African countries. I mean, the place was colonized by the French and you guys know most French colonies struggle, right? So Cameroon is no exception.
but that being said I'm not there to cover pain and suffering I think that Africa gets a lot of bad rap already so as an African I'm not gonna go out there in the continent and cover mama africa in a negative light somebody else that might be his thing you go out there you look for the worst thing you can find but me personally being connected to the continent i think is disrespectful if i did it because as africans we don't need more negative coverages about africa so trust me guys there's a lot for me to cover in cameroon cameroon is a beautiful country and it's getting better and things will get better one day we will also have those amazing things i have become very very happy for in other countries another thing i want to mention is that as an african africa is my home africa is my home because people tell me also go film in cameroon go do this go do that africa is my home it doesn't matter if i'm in ghana if I'm in Nigeria, if I'm in Gabon, if I'm in Ethiopia, it doesn't matter where I'm at. It's my home. I don't have to be in a specific place. You know, I'm an African. You know what I'm saying? These borders were designed by the colonizers. We have some of the similar tribes in many of these countries. We are all the same, brothers. Stop telling me, go to Cameroon, go film your country. My country is every country in Africa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So in the in the great light, that's that's what I can say. But when the time comes, you guys will see some of those videos, you know, in Cameroon. When the time comes, I'm under no pressure. Let me also cover this thing before I forget. Let me cover this thing before I forget. YouTube is not my full-time job, guys. Contrary to popular beliefs, YouTube is not my full-time job. YouTube for me. It's a part-time hobby. I love it. I want to grow bigger so that one day I make more money and travel more and discover the world more. That is one thing I cannot wait to do. That being said, I have a job, people. I can't produce videos every time. And when I travel, I have to balance having fun and creating content. I can't possibly be in a situation where I'm not enjoying myself because I'm spending all day holding a camera or editing. If I was full time and I was able to go sit in the amazing country of Kenya, for example, for six months, then I can even take a week and just edit videos and then drop them, right? Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury. I have to do my own personal things off camera. I don't record every aspect of my life. That is not what I do. My vlogs, you've seen them, they're not like that. I think that there's a part of me that must remain private and will remain private. But I will bring you guys content that I think you will enjoy and that will prepare you for dealing with your trip when you decide to go to these places. I want my videos to basically be a guide for the next traveler. So that's what I try to do. And if I meet somebody informative, interesting, entertaining, I'll bring them along. That's what it's all about. So I can't always do that every day. And sometimes I have to get off the camera. Every content creator goes to moments where they don't feel like filming or they don't feel like editing. I spend way too much time in front of the computer putting things together that I refuse to travel to an amazing destination just to record, you know? I do the best I can, guys. And at this point, after two years on YouTube, I'm sitting at close to 500 videos on YouTube. So nobody can say I'm not being active, right? I'm, I'm posting, I'm posting often because Ultimately, like I was saying earlier, I love creating content and I love editing. In a weird way, it's like therapeutic for me to put the content together. It's a process that I really, really like. So that's that. So the last part of this video, I want to address some legal issues, something that I was not prepared for when I started my YouTube channel. One of the features I love about YouTube the most is to make people ghost. So if you're talking too much trash about me and you hurt my feelings, I just turn you into a ghost. So I don't see your comments anymore. You can write all you want about how Ivan is this. Ivan can get girls on his own. Ivan can do this. Ivan has a big head. Anything that tickles your fancy. Most of the time it's funny. But if you do it too much, or you just straight up mean, I will turn you into a ghost. What does that mean? 
you can write and I won't see it anymore. These are features that I wish Instagram and Facebook will adopt as well because all you can do is block people. But with this feature, I can make you invisible. Woof. You just disappear. And you can keep on writing. And I will never read you again. I can't see your comments. You know who you are, who just, no matter what I do, you have to come and make a comment, negative comment, and talk trash, and say I'm this or that. You know who you are. I don't see you guys. I don't see you. All right, you have been invisible, and if I identify you as being one of those people, because I want my platform to be about positivity and about me, about my channel, right? I don't have time to talk about another YouTuber. This is not what I created adventures for. I made you a ghost. Bye-bye. The last portion of this video is going to be about some potential issues on YouTube. And some of them may be legal issues. You have to be careful. That's why I wanted to be here at the Commander Stadium. This is my local football team. Even though I'm a Steelers fan. Go Steelers, black and yellow all day. But I wanted to come out here to the Commander Stadium. Why? This team used to be called the Washington Redskins. And the Redskins is a derogatory word against Native Americans. So for the longest time, they were called the Washington Redskins. And after lawsuits and complaints from different groups, some people feel it's a historical name and I have to admit I live in the DC area. Most people do not use or did not use the word Washington Redskins in a derogatory fashion. They didn't even think about insulting Native Americans. Doesn't matter. Some people in the Native American community felt insulted and after lawsuits, after lawsuits, complaints, after complaints, they had to change the name to the Commanders. So this is the current name that they have. Before that, the transitional name was the Washington football team until they figured out this amazing name of Commanders. <laughs> so let's see how long they keep this name because they are currently going through a, you know, a process and changing a few things. Magic Johnson is part of a group of new owners that may change a lot of things here at the FedEx field. Why am I talking about all of this? I'm talking all of this because of the potential legal issues you may run into when you decide to open a YouTube channel. What am I talking about? Let's say you film with somebody, you make a video, you collaborate with them, and then they say, well, before you post this video, let me see it. And you say, no, I'm not gonna let you see this video. Or you film a video with somebody and you post it months later. And the person feels like the thoughts that they express in the video are no longer their thoughts. Maybe they said they didn't like dogs, they prefer cats and they changed their minds. And in the video, they said that they felt the opposite way of the current feelings. So they tell you, take the video down. I don't want to be associated with this content any longer. What do you do? So that's the situation I found myself in. A little while back, I filmed with an individual that shall remain nameless. And this person, basically, I notified the individual that, hey, the video is ready, and I finally posted it. And the person told me, Okay, I will check out the video. After this person saw the video, the person told me to delete portions of the video for reasons that I didn't understand, reasons that didn't make sense. The video is good, the video is clean, and I made sure that the video does not violate any YouTube guidelines. So I said, no problem. What areas do you have a problem with? And this person told me I have a problem with this, and I have a problem with that, and I have a problem with this and the third. And I said, okay, no problem. Let me know what portion of the video you don't like and I will go ahead and cut the video. You know, when you don't do YouTube, you don't understand how things work. I can't take a video, I mean I can, but to make changes to a video that's already live on YouTube, you do it on the YouTube Studio app, right? You go on the website, YouTube Studio, whatever, and you make your changes. YouTube goes and make those changes and it may take several hours. It's the same thing that happens if you have a copyright violation. 
YouTube notifies you that the song you've used or whatever is not copyright free. So therefore, they would not monetize the video any longer unless you change the song, cut the segment, or do and make changes, any of the changes that they have suggested. So I was ready to make the changes with this individual. If you film with me and you have a problem with something, you let me know, I will make those changes. The whole idea is that we potentially can collaborate again, so I'm not seeking to make enemies. So the more changes I was willing to accept, the more this person kept adding changes and said to the end, you know what, just take the whole video down. I don't want this video out there. Guys, this is a video that I spent a tremendous amount of time editing, and the person is not telling me something like, my, my address is on there, my name is on there, I did not tag the person, I didn't put their name, I didn't tag their Instagram, I didn't tag their Facebook. I made sure that nobody can identify this person. And again, what we discussed on the video is not a controversial topic. So I didn't understand why this individual wanted me to take the video down and did not even express to me why. Simply the fact was that I want the video down. So this is what I said to this person. I am not going to take this video down. There's absolutely no reason for me to take this video down. I'm willing to make changes. So what happened? The person filed a complaint on YouTube and basically alleged privacy violations. <laughs> wow. Privacy violations, even though the name is not on there, the personal identifier information is not on there, the address is not on there, the license plate is not on there. I spent time editing this video and now the persons, just because they changed their minds, decided to tell me to take the video down. I said no. So they went to YouTube and filed a privacy complaint. So what happened after that, YouTube contacted me and told me basically that they have received a complaint about this video. I was not surprised given the way my conversation go was going with this individual. And I reached out to YouTube customer service. I wrote to them and informed to them that not only was the video consensual, the person has expressed that. In addition, this person has not given me a reason to take the video down. It was made with their full consent. Matter of fact, the person was excited to film this video. So I don't really understand why all of a sudden they changed their minds. And I explained to YouTube the editing that I have done to keep the video clean so that it could be monetized because if there's certain things you display on the video, YouTube will not monetize the video and they might potentially take it off the platform. Why would I take all this time filming a video, editing a video, putting the video on YouTube, doing, why would I do all of that just so the video can be taken down? It's a waste of my time. So I wouldn't put myself in situations like that purposely. So YouTube informed me that they were going to review the complaint they received and let me know basically what they would do at that particular point. So I waited the 48 hours and then I was notified by YouTube that no violation took place in the video. All the community guidelines have been respected. The video is obviously made with consent and therefore they are not going to take the video down. Ah, I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy because this thing, YouTube, can be tricky at times. YouTube is in a tough position. They do have to respect people's privacy rights at the same time balance it with creators rights as well you know you can't film somebody without their knowledge that's not fair those sneaky cameras is not something i do my camera is right there i ask you if you want to make a collaboration with me you agree the moment you agree to film with a youtuber be aware of this they can take the video post it on instagram on Facebook, on TikTok, make reels out of it, post it anywhere they want. This is what you signed up for. If you don't want to, like some of my friends that are very interesting and I asked them to collaborate with me and they told me they don't want to be on YouTube. I respect that. Don't film. It's not hard. It's not hard. And I'm not even one of those people that will edit things in a way to make you look bad. I will clean the video, make sure it does not violate YouTube community guidelines. I will reach out to you and ask you, for example, if there's something additional you want me to put. For example, ladies, I often ask them, do you want me to tag your Instagram or not? Because sometimes when you put somebody's Instagram, people get ridiculous, especially if the lady is attractive. People will reach out to them. 
right? All kind of nonsense. So some people don't want to be bothered. So I always check, do you want me to tag your Instagram or not? Some people say yes, some people say no. Some YouTubers would just film with you and then they would do whatever. You don't know. Somebody, you can meet them one time, then your country, and then they're gone tomorrow. So make sure you understand what you sign up for when you decide to make a collaboration. And watch what you say. Watch what you say. You can't rely on somebody editing it out. I will. If you tell me cut something, I will. But not everybody does that. Somebody may feel like, no, I want this video to be like this. I want it to be controversial. And what you said is controversial. Therefore, I am going to post it this way. You don't know. The best editing thing you have is yourself. Watch what you say. Don't, don't be, you know Kanye West. You can't just say things. It's gonna, it has a price. It has a price. So be careful what you say. Be free to say what you want. But also, don't be surprised with the backlash if it's controversial, that's what happens. And it might be funny for the YouTuber, right? But it may not be funny for you. So, this is the one thing I wanted to tell you guys. Be careful, if you're a content creator, make sure you get consent from people before filming with them. I'm at the point where I am going to organize an organi uh, a company here in the United States for my YouTube channel. The second reason is financial, which I will touch on that also in a second here. Make sure you have consent. Even get them to sign a contract so they don't come back a month later and say, hey, I told you to pick this, to, to cut this part. You didn't cut it. I asked you to remove this. You didn't. I asked you to take the video down. You didn't. Or you might even date somebody, right? And then you break up and then they have a video. I have a friend of mine who's going through this right now. His ex-girlfriend, got a lawyer involved because she wants those videos down and he he doesn't feel like he should take them down because there's nothing wrong with the videos she was fine with the videos when they were together now that they broke up she has a problem with that she got a lawyer and they are co currently going to litigation about this what is the rule i don't know what the rule is the courts will decide but youtube is very clear they will protect people's rights to express themselves at the same time, you have to make sure that YouTubers are not doing some shady things out there, like recording people without their approval, things of that nature. Or kids, you know, they're very strict about this thing, so you have to watch what you film. So, we'll see what happens with my friend and his situation, but this is a warning to you. If you're thinking about opening a YouTube channel, be careful who you film with. It's all fun and games until people change their minds. Maybe because you break up with them, or they get divorced or they get a boyfriend and they don't want their boyfriend to see them in this light or whatever the case might be, people change. So we can't be creating content and then somebody's feelings changes two months later and says, take the video down. If there are valid reasons for the video to be taken down, it will be taken down. But just because you're saying, take the video down and you're unhappy with something does not mean YouTube has to do that. It's a case-by-case -case basis. So the advice I have to give to YouTubers is make sure you have verbal approval from people, sometimes even on the video. Or you may come sign a contract to protect yourself against them saying you did this, you did that, or whatever. And for you guys collaborating with us content creators, just make sure that you are clear about your expectations and that you film with someone you trust and you don't say something that you may potentially regret and it might cause you problems at your job or in your relationship. That's what I want to say. And I want to close with this. When you're getting paid on YouTube, you will have the tax man at your door at the end of the year. That's what I'm about to face this year. Because YouTube is an income at this point for me. I'm earning money from this. So guess what? Uncle Sam needs a cut of that money as well. So when you fly, when you buy your computer, anything that you do like that, expenses that occur, that you occur in the process of creating content and traveling, these are business expenses. But for you to shield yourself from paying more than you should, make sure you open a company. So I'm gonna be with my friend and I'm going to basically open a business and my business is going to be this YouTube channel. So I will be able to you know, reduce some of my tax obligations for my flights, my hotels, things that I spend money on creating content. 
So that's the one thing I want to tell you. It's like many times people open channels, you start making money, and you don't do the legal things that you need to do to shield yourself from paying excessive or more taxes than you should. It costs money to travel, as you guys know. Staying in these hotels, doing all of this thing, you will incur bills. So why would you give more money than you need to? Protect yourself, protect yourself. So guys, this is basically my message for this. It's a tip for you watching, thinking about opening a YouTube channel. It's also to tell you guys a little bit more about my personal feelings about things, things I did not expect. And at this end of the year, I want to continue growing and I will be posting more and more content. Many people were disappointed when I decided to film in DC. I went from getting 45,000 views on my first video in Kenya to recently 300 views on my video in Arlington, Virginia. I was like, wow. <laughs> it's a big change, guys, but I don't live on the road. I'm not a full-time traveler. So from time to time, when I'm home, I'm going to bring you content from my own city. My city of Washington is amazing. This is where the president lives. We have the US Capitol here. We have the Washington Monument. We have the African American Museum and all kinds of museums in the area. I will bring you content from the next city over there, Baltimore. I'm gonna bring you content right here from my city, sometimes. So when I go out, I'll bring you content from the, the country that I am visiting. But you can't be expecting me to just post one type of content. My niche is travelers. My niche is anyone interested in history. My niche is anyone that likes stimulating conversations and interviews. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Regardless of views, I'm going to be free from those. Because like I said earlier in this video, YouTube is not my full-time job. All right? This is not my full-time job. I love the money I make from this, of course, because it allows me to travel more. But views are not going to force me to make a certain type of content. Guys, if I just was looking for views, I can just walk down the beach in Copacabana and film women in bikini all day long. Those channels blow up to crazy numbers. But when I bring people to Arlington and tell the history of the most popular military cemetery that used to be a slave plantation, it's a historical site, I got 300 views. It is what it is. Guess what? There's going to be more of that type of content also because I want to grow my audience. I don't want to be limited to only one type of thing. And I have to make the hard decision of filming things that may not always give me clicks. I know what can give me clicks. And if I was depending on this for money, I would not make that type of content. But I want to be free and I want to say thank you to all the people who are stuck with me throughout this journey. And I will continue to bring you more adventures. So on this end of the year, guys, I hope you've enjoyed everything I posted from my time in Korea to all of these countries that I had the blessing to visit. Thank you so much for watching our adventures. Kindly hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. From Washington, D.C., Happy New Year 2024. I'll see you next year. And with that, the 2023 season comes to an end.